Hey guys, happy Saturday. It's Linda Lippin here. I am a master Pilates teacher based in Lower Manhattan, and I consider my work to be to help people feel and function better using Pilates fitness and nutrition as the tools. And I mentor Pilates teachers to do the same thing for their clients and create a sustainable practice for themselves. I'd like to talk to you today about um, an issue that keeps making the rounds. Um, it does so every few years in the fitness and Pilates communities, and that issue is forward spinal flexion in Pilates. Um, so my views on this have actually changed over the course of the years. Hey, Misty. Um, and I'll tell you why. So I had started out as a traditional classical Pilates teacher, and I taught all the exercises, all the flexion, all the hyperextension. Hey, Jan. Um, and then after kind of hurting my own back, uh, reading a lot of Stuart McGill, working with a lot of um, clients um, in really bad back pain and back situations, I started teaching more extension, not necessarily hyperextension, but more kind of flat back, more thoracic extension, and more lift. And then I'm going to tell you what started happening in my own body as a result of that um, is that I really started to flatten out my thoracic curve, um, and that caused a whole host of issues up and down my spine, um, including in my neck and my lower back. And what I've realized in doing some research and studying with some um, biomechanics experts, um, including one of my clients uh, who's finishing his PhD um, in biomechanics at Columbia right now, is that the human spine is actually built for mostly forward flexion, mostly coming from the thoracic spine. There is a difference between unsupported slouching and supported lengthened forward flexion. For our clients who have healthy spines, healthy bone densities, um, it's a total disservice to those clients to not teach any forward flexion. And that's why we have exercises, plenty of them um, in Pilates and in other, other disciplines that teach that work, okay? And it's important to get extension in but it's also important when we extend to think about the entire spine extending so that extension starts actually at the lower back, at the lumbar spine, which should not be flat, but going a little bit forward and then works its way up through the neck, okay? This is why I find it crucially important to teach people how to find a neutral pelvis and a lengthened spine. Again, the concept of neutral spine is totally ridiculous to me. It means nothing. Everyone's spine looks different. If we look at neutral pelvis, then we can teach people how to deal with their own spinal curves and their own spinal shapes from there, okay? So, unless somebody has a spinal pathology in which K, like, severe osteoporosis or osteoporosis or osteopenia where really forward flexion is going to cause them some issues or with one of my old um, apprentices from Real Pilates who is back in Texas and just found out that she has some severe spinal issues and I'm teaching her privates remotely um, to again learn how to stabilize the spine and stop her spine from moving so much but in general most folks can do all of those exercises and it is not bad to do them. The biggest, one of the biggest services we can give our clients is to teach them the difference between slouching over and a long lifted thoracic flexion with abdominal and back support. They are different things, completely different things. So as we're going through March Madness and as you're thinking about your own Pilates teaching and your own Pilates practice, I want you to think about those exercises that are in flexion and think about whether you teach them all the time, why or why not, why you might be leaving them out. Um, I will talk uh, probably to, in my video tomorrow about teaching a mixed level class, uh, say at a hotel like I did six days a week for four years, um, where every single day is potentially new people coming in with new issues and new injuries, and how do you get them all 
to work on what they all need for their bodies in a way that doesn't hurt anybody and keeps everybody happy um, and not complaining. So um, all of that said, I encourage all of you as Pilates teachers to teach the flexion work. Don't be afraid of the flexion work. If you're not sure how to see in your clients, whether they're having a neutral pelvis, whether they're doing a supported spinal flexion or not, um, then I encourage you to go over to my website to lindalippin.com uh, slash free hyphen resources, download my Mastering the Mat uh, free guide. And that gives you some action items that will include um, some extra kind of, uh, not even remedial, but just some extra educational work on those Pilates mat exercises that you might be leaving out because you feel like you might be doing your client a disservice. I'm here to tell you that you may be doing your client very much a disservice by leaving those exercises out. They need to do them. Um, again, unless they have something wrong with them, as some kind of pathology, everybody can do all of those exercises even though they might be hard. So thanks a lot for joining me. Have a great rest of your Saturday and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. And I will put a link to the free guide also um, down in the comments of this video. Uh, have a great day. Bye.